Cricket Flashbacks, a series in which we recall some of the great moments of Australian cricket from the past. Firstly, the tied test between Australia and the West Indies in Brisbane in 1960. The West Indies arrived in Australia with little recent international success to their credit. They'd failed to win a test against England at home in the Caribbean earlier in the year, and with two defeats and only one win in their six first-class matches leading up to the first test, they'd given no real indication of things to come. The West Indies batted first and were soon in trouble. Alan Davidson claimed three early wickets, and with the West Indies at three for 65, Australia looked to be away to a good start. But then the true worth of their opponents became apparent. Frank Worrell joined Gary Sabres, and after seeing Davidson and Mekif out of the attack, they set about destroying the Australian advantage, with Richie Benno, the logical bogeyman, suffering heavy punishment. When the partnership was broken, they'd added 174 runs for the fourth wicket, but by then the scene had been set. Five of the last eight batsmen topped 50, and the West Indies were all out for 453, of which Sabres made 132. Alan Davidson, whose five wickets had cost 135 runs, recalls Sabres' dynamic display. Well, that, I think, was technically the best innings, or not technically, but certainly the best innings I've ever seen in a test match, because he just didn't beat the fieldsman, he bisected the fieldsman. It's, the, it's a hundred which I would describe as probably the best hundred I've ever seen scored in a test match. Chasing a huge first innings target, Australia would have to score quickly to put itself in a safe position. And score quickly they did. Amassing a total of 505, Australia took a first innings lead of 52, thanks mainly to a magnificent 181 by Norman O'Neill. Alan Davidson again. His ability to play shots to all parts of the ground, I think, you know, you saw him play a sweep, you saw him play a pull shot, uh, on drives, off drives, back foot drives. There wasn't a shot that he didn't have, and when he was going, well, there was just no holding him. In their second innings, the West Indies again found Davidson their main worry, and the Australian left-hander finished with 6 for 87, giving him 11 wickets for the match. I must admit that a couple of things came off in that second innings. Mm -hmm. uh, the Yorker, the bowl savers, uh, the Yorker, the bowled hall at the finish. A couple of things that you try, they do come off, and, uh, and when they do, of course, it puts your side in a position where you can win, and of course you're always looking for that. And uh, I must admit that it, they did hold us up for that half hour on the last day. We thought we were in a very good position, actually. The West Indies totaled 284, leaving Australia with 233 to win in just over five hours. These were to be among the most dramatic and exciting five hours of test cricket ever played. Australia soon succumbed to the pace of Wes Hall and was 6 for 92 when Benno joined Davidson and the game apparently in the West Indies grip. They held on until T, at which point Australia still needed 128 runs in the last two hours with only four wickets standing. Alan Davidson tells us what determined Australia's approach. Well, I think the fact that uh, when we went back after T, we still wanted, I think, 128 in about 120 minutes. And as we walked out, Richie and myself never said a word. As a matter of fact, we were pretty silent. But when we got out there, he just turned and he says, well, let's give it a go. And I said, OK. Mm. And I believe that that was what made the series. Uh, a lot has been said about how the West Indies made the series. But I believe that in that last two hours, it would have been so easy for us to have just played for a draw. Mm. And yet, with six wickets down, Richie said, let's give it a go. In what rates as one of the finest ever late order partnerships, Benno and Davidson stayed together until the score had reached 226, only seven runs short of victory. Their partnership for the seventh wicket had realised 134 runs. With every run added by Davidson and Benno taking Australia closer to victory, the excitement at the ground was becoming more obvious and the tension in the Australian dressing room more unbearable. Australia's number 11 batsman, spin bowler Lindsay Klein. Davo and Benno started to get on top and we started to develop that partnership. And Slasher had us sitting in our chairs and, and wouldn't allow us to change chairs. If we needed to go to the toilet or change our gear or do something like that, we had to do it in between overs and be back before the ball was started, before they bowled the ball the next over. So it was very, very, very tense in the dressing room with Slasher causing this, uh, um, everyone to sit tight on the particular chairs. Then Davidson was run out by Joe Solomon for 80. He became the first cricketer ever to take 10 wickets and score over 100 runs in the same test. But he had just put Australia within reach of a victory which two hours earlier had seemed impossible. 
Although he didn't see Australia through to winning, he still thinks highly of his own display. You know, when I think back on it, I think that's the best innings I've ever played mm. uh, because of the wicket. You know, as I say, it was a f normal fifth-day wicket. But it wasn't easy, but I, I don't think I hit a ball off the middle of the bat in the whole innings. And uh, I can still think of going back when Slasher, I joined Slasher at 5 for 57, and he gave me the normal story, no run-outs as I got to the wicket. Uh, then at 6 for 90-odd, when Richie came in, that very first ball that you, the people saw, I still don't know to this day how it missed bowling him. Mm. It went between his bat and pad, and I thought it must have bowled him. And uh, fortunately it didn't, but it was... Uh, it was a, a feeling of, of sadness, really. I was, I was nearly in tears, I yeah, can assure yeah, you. But, Alan, in retrospect, if you had not have been run out, the finish wouldn't have been there. Well, this is right. I think, I think probably this was the greatest thing that happened for cricket. With Davidson gone, Wally Grout joined his captain and took a single from the first ball he faced. Australia then needed six runs from the last over, which was to be bowled by Wes Hall. Grout had strike, and when hit on the thigh by the first ball, he was called through by Benno for a leg by. Five runs needed and seven balls to come. The historic call of the remainder of the over recalls the excitement and drama of the finish. Commentators Clive Harburg and Johnny Moyes. All back at his bowling mark. Moves in, bowls to Benno. Benno tries to hook him and is out. Caught the edge and is caught behind by Alexander. Eight wickets for 228. Well, what a test match. And here's Mekov coming out now. Can Australia win this test match? Three minutes of play left and about six balls to go. On the other point, can Hall win it for the West Indies? Crowd on their toes, the fields have been on their toes. The most unconcerned person on the Brisbane cricket ground, Wesley Hall, as he tosses the ball idly from hand to hand. Moves in, bowls to make it. Forward to it, drives it, ball across, gets a hand to it, takes the sting out of it, and the ball runs down to mid-off, fielded by Valentine. Hall now to make it. Moves in. On his leg stump. Tries to sweep it, and here's a stolen single, and he might be run out, and Hall misses it <laughs> The ball passed the wickets. Brout was down the wicket like a shot. Called Mekov. Mekov a little late starting off. Hall ran up, gathered the ball, had a shot at the stumps. One by. Sundries 14. Mekov has yet to score. Grout is one. Eight for 229. Ball to Grout. And Grout skies him. Three of them, four of them getting under it. Ken High catches it and it's Grout. It's not. Paul and Ken High ran in for it. Four of them converged on the ball. Paul dropped it. Hall eventually got his hands to it, but Ken High came in and I'm sure he balked Hall in his efforts to catch that one. Australia requiring three runs to win. And three balls to go. Hall steps in off the mark, shirt trailing behind him. Bowls to Mekov. Mekov pulls him high into the outfield. Four runs. No, it won't get to the fence. They're going for the three, though. Grout slides his bat behind the line. He's flying by it, and he's out. Run out. Run out. Run out. Two runs only. Australia still requiring one run to win. Australia, nine for 232, as Lindsay Klein comes out. The last man... Uh, I can't remember putting on my gear in the last uh, few moments, but it was all excitement and the players weren't quite certain of how many runs we needed and how many runs we were getting at that particular time. But uh, when Wally was run out, they said, well, you're in, and, and away I went. And I think I got to the centre and I can't remember walking out there. Frank Worrell did say to me as I passed him at the wicket, he said, gee, Lindsay, you look a little pale. And uh, 
I said, Frank, certainly, I certainly feel it at the moment. And uh, facing up the worst ball at that particular time, I think he walked back another 25 to 30 yards, and I felt as if he pushed off from the fence. And I can remember him running in, and I can say, remember saying to myself, when is he going to get here? It felt like half an hour, you know, running in. It was just so much time, and so many things went through my mind at that particular time. But Ian Meckiff and I had a, agreed to run on that particular ball. No matter where it went, we were going to run. Last man for Australia, two balls to go in this test match. All back at his bowling mark. He will bowl to Klein. And here's the single that wins the match for Australia. He's out, he's right out. Right out, the stumps have thrown down. Well. And so Australia all out for 232, resulting in the only tie in Test cricket history. As one can imagine, the closeness of the scores caused considerable confusion. Even the players themselves were immersed in the excitement of the event. With um, Ian Meckiff was running for a draw. He thought we were run, one run behind. I thought we were tied and I was running for a win. So as it turned out, we didn't know until after the game who was correct. And here's the single that wins the match for Australia. He's out, he's right out! 